If your dream is to be with the Lord Jesus Christ, trust me, death beats life. Do you believe hell's a real place? If you believe hell's a real place, you can never ask yourself the question, how can I share my faith with that person? The only question you can ask yourself is, how can I not share my faith with that person? Do you know there's people in hell wishing and wanting that you would tell somebody the truth about the Lord Jesus Christ? People in heaven believe in personal evangelism. People in hell believe in personal evangelism. But what is sad today, born again believers in Jesus Christ on planet Earth today don't believe in personal evangelism. Every second, seven people die. By the time you put your head on your pillow tonight, over 600,000 people have walked off into eternity. Heaven or hell as we speak. Got a very simple question for you. Do you care? Much tougher question though. Do you care enough to do something about it? Because trust me on a simple fact, if you do not care enough to do something about it, trust me, you do not care. And I'll go ahead and tell you, that's the problem we got with the American church today. We swear to the high heavens we care where all these people are going to spend eternity, but I don't care enough to get in a conversation with my next door neighbor, with one of my friends from high school. Think about that. What's it going to take if you get out of your comfort zone? What have we done? We've, we've formed a type of Christianity that did not exist 2,000 years ago. We've made sharing our faith an optional part of Christianity. It was never an optional part. It was what we were living for to see six billion people saved. Does your heart beat that way? What's it going to take to get out of your comfort zone? You want a heavy piece of truth? Here's a heavy piece of truth. I can guarantee you one thing that you can't do in heaven that you can do down here. You can worship God in heaven, you can praise God in heaven, you can sing songs to God in heaven, you can read your Bible in heaven. But one thing you can't do in heaven that you can do down here is share your faith with a non-believer. Okay, why? There's no non-believers there. Do you know from the day you die to the end of eternity, and there is no end of eternity, you'll never, ever, ever be able to share your faith with a lost person again? If that's true and you know it's true, shouldn't that be one of the high callings of our life is to reach out to all these lost people? Do you understand when I take my last breath with this body, I will never talk with a lost person again for all of eternity? That's a heavy piece of truth. Haven't you been comforted by the blood of Jesus Christ? Have you not been? Or are you just going to sit here and sing songs about it while there's an entire world out there with so much pain in their life and you've got the answer to it and you will not give it away to these people? If you're not out of your comfort zone, I'm about to challenge you to get out of it, okay? And to stay out of it. I'm crazy. Okay, I'm crazy. I'm getting crazier in a biblical way. I want six billion people saved. And it's not going to happen unless all of us who claim the name of Jesus Christ walk in and stand up for what we believe. Does that make sense? So you can swear to the high heavens you care, but if you don't care enough to talk with somebody, trust me, you do not care. There's people at gay and lesbian festivals that need so desperately to hear from you. There's people at Antioch that so desperately need to hear from you. And you're keeping it to yourself. Selfish. You gotta be selfless. But you have some serious questions to ask yourself. You're still gonna keep living the same old, same old mediocre Christian life, Mark Cahill? Or you're gonna start getting out of your comfort zone and start serving the God of this universe like you're supposed to? I have some serious questions to ask myself. That's one of the defining characteristics in my life to get out of my comfort zone and start standing up for what I believe no matter what the cost. Is there a cost when you stand up for it? Is there a cost when you stand up for it? You better believe there's a cost for it. Jesus Christ knew it, but he knew his dad was worth it. The question is, when, I'm, when am I going to get to the point that I know my God is worth it? No matter what the cost.
if I can't witness out there and I can only witness down here, what's the only way we'll ever get good at is what? Practice, because it's not a gift. It's just an issue of obedience or disobedience. It's not a gift. It's just an issue of obedience or disobedience. We plant, we water, only God gives the increase. Real simple. Death means just the beginning. It's just the beginning in a place called heaven or just the beginning in a place called hell. So always remember that the people you go to a funeral, they're not dead, they're alive. The question is where are they and who warned them? Who spoke truth into their life and do that? Snatch people from the fire and do not let them go to hell. You snatch them back and don't let them go there. The question is when you walk out of here, where are you going? When you die, you don't get a do-over, you don't get a mulligan, you don't get a second chance. Die with no regrets. Obey the Lord Jesus Christ in everything he says to do before you take your last breath. God takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked. He takes none. We need to stand up and be bold. A hundred years now, we're all dead anyways. We're all dead. Understand what matters. Souls matter to God, yes or no? It was proven on the cross 2,000 years ago. Your job is to warn people. It's their choice what to do. But if you love somebody, trust me, you'll blow the trumpet loud and long and hard, okay, and snatch them from the fire. Do not let them take a last breath without the Lord Jesus Christ.